This short video will look at forecasting with seasonality. Um, seasonality really is a, a pattern that we see repeating typically within um, the confines of the year. So, for example, we could look at uh, weekly patterns, we could look at um, quarterly patterns. Uh, so a, a classic example would be where we have the, the four seasons during the year, uh, winter, spring, summer, and fall. And then uh, the, those seasons are repeated on a year-by-year -year basis. We could have it in a shorter time frame, such as um, a weekly seasonal pattern where we observe over that seven-day period from Sunday to Saturday a particular pattern. So if you look at movie theaters, um, Tuesdays is a, is a cheap night, and so uh, by dropping the price of movies, we tend to see a, a particular pattern where a number of students um, would go to movies. And then towards the weekend, on a Friday and Saturday, we see increasing the demand and it drops on Sunday and drops during the rest of the week as well. So you see weekly patterns. Um, sometimes you could see monthly patterns as well. So when we have a data of that sort, how can we handle it so that we could actually forecast with seasonality in mind? And here's an example where we are given three years of sales data and the data is organized by the seasons. So we have winter, spring, summer, and fall. And we have three years of data for 2007 to 2009. I sort of created the kind of a template that I'm going to use to solve that problem. But we'll explain it a little bit further. Before delving into the solution of the problem, it's always useful to plot the data. And so I've taken the sales data and plotted for the three years. And we could see the pattern repeating itself. So here we go. One, two, three, four. And then we go back in one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the same sort of repeated pattern. However, there seemed to have been a drop in sales in 2008. I also like to take a look across the years, but for the same season, just to see how things look. Because uh, there's one approach that tries to look at the data um, to, I mean, that tries to, to forecast using the entire data set. And I think that is also useful to consider a case where instead of using all of the data, you could disaggregate the time series by its seasons and treat each season separately and forecast. So, for example, with those three values, I could project next winter's um, uh, sales. So I could say, well, okay, depending on what conditions happen here in 2008, assuming that that won't repeat itself, we seem to be an increasing trend. So I might project 2008, now 2010, sorry, demand to be somewhere up here. And the same thing with each of those. So I'm only focusing on that particular season, and I don't get the noise or the distortions of the other seasons when I'm projecting the forecast. That's one, to me, that's a more clever approach. However, uh, the textbook actually handles this a bit differently. So we're going to go to an Excel spreadsheet that we will use to demonstrate how we would solve this problem. And so it looks like this. So here is my data that I set up, and I'll explain the chart this for you shortly. Here's the graph of the seasons, and here's the, um, the graph of the data across the three years. So here I've disaggregated by seasons, but here's all of the data together. So if we set it up in this fashion where we have the different periods that actually com that comprise the seasons, we need to calculate the following data. One is that we will need to calculate a seasonal average. In other words, what's the average demand per season? And then we need to calculate the overall average for all of the data. So when we take the seasonal average and the overall average of the data, what we are basically arguing is that the difference between that seasonal average 
and the overall average is because of the particular season. So if the overall average is l much larger than the seasonal average, then we could say that we need to adjust. Because of seasonality, we need to adjust the demand down. If the overall average of a particular season is much larger than the overall average for all of the data, all of the years, then we will see that we there's, need, there's a need for a seasonal factor that adjusts the demand or the sales upwards. So what we're going to do is, like I said, um, take the global average and use that to kind of determine what the seasonal averages are. Now, this additional data here in terms of total and average, uh, it's not absolutely necessary, but just thought I would actually take a look at this data. So let's just compute some of these values. Okay. Average. So we just simply use the formulas that you get in Excel. I will do sum. Always remember your equal sign. Equal sum of the same set of numbers. And I'm going to take the grand total. Just to see what the total across the three years happens to be. Um, overall average. So now I'm going to take the average of all of the data. And we need to generate a 2010 forecast. How do we do this? We'll figure that out. So now I'm going to drag these values here just to fill that. So we see the average demand for 2007 was 104. Average demand for um, 2008 was uh, 80.75. Average demand for 2007. And now 134.5. All right. The overall average here happened to be 106. 106. So let us um, do this. We will now calculate the seasonal averages. So we will take these values and average them across a season. Just those three values. And so that's a seasonal average if I do this. But now, to determine what the, um, what, what will I use now for the seasonal factor? What I will do is I will take the seasonal averages and divide by the overall, um, basically see the average or the overall seasonal average uh, of 106. In other words, I'm taking these individual values, and what we're saying is that across the three years, there's an overall average of 106, but those seasonal factors is what causes the adjustment. There's some adjustment from that 106 down to 75. There's an adjustment of the 106 up to 110. There's an adjustment of that. So how do we calculate that? We simply divide the seasonal average by the global average right? but I want to lock this um, B42 because I will use it in the calculation of the other values so here we go so what happened is whatever the global average turns out to be all right we could adjust that global average by these factors to get our forecast so in a sense what we need to do is if we could project the total for if we could project the total for 2009 we could take that total for 2009 divide it by 4 to get what the average is for the year and then multiply it by the seasonal factor now what we can do if we want to to forecast for 2010 and so 2010 forecast is to figure out what we might want to use as an average demand for the year 2010 but well, what would that be average demand of course first thing you need to calculate the total demand and then 
get the um, average demand by dividing by four. So we could do one of two things. We could either project the average or project the total. If we project the total, we're going to have to divide by four. So it really doesn't matter if we project the average for the year versus projecting the total for the year. So let's just work with the average for the year. Um, how can we do it? We could do a, a, a moving forecast, a two-period moving forecast. So we could average those two values and use that as the average demand for 2010, that average seasonal demand for 2010, and then adjust them by the seasonal factors. That's one way to do it. But if, we, so, but if you look at this, if we average those two values, we're going to project downwards from 134. Question is, do we want to do that? Or do we want to, if we look at the seasonal values, if we look across here, it seems to suggest that as you go across the three years, maybe we've seen an increase in trend. But let's just say we're going to use a two-period moving average. Uh, so with a two-period moving average, the forecast, the average um, seasonal value for 2010 would be the average of, which is just a two period moving average, 80.75 and 134.5. So we're going to raise this to 107.625. So that's what we're going to use. And we will now calculate our forecast by adjusting this value by the seasonal factors. So what we're seeing is that the average monthly for 2009 is going to be 107. Notice that that is significantly down from 134. We, might, we don't have to accept that. We could try to, a different forecast. We could, we could say that we're expecting at least 5% growth from that 134.5, in which case we would take this value multiplied by 1.05. Um, so there are different ways, but I'm just using uh, one of the techniques in the book, which is a moving average. We could do an exponential smoothing. Uh, we could do a trend projection since it seems like, okay, there was a dip here, but we, see, we might see something increasing. So we might decide to actually go across here like this. Anyway, we're going to div divide, we're going to multiply this value, which is a seasonal factor, by the average for the year. And I want to lock B43 because I'm going to use the same value in computing the others. Lock that. And so here we go. And so here is our 2010 forecast. We expecting uh, 76, if we round that up, let's round it to nice numbers. Um, go back to home. And we will remove. So there we go. We're expecting demand to be uh, for winter, 76. For spring, 112. 167 for summer. And down to 75. Which is not a whole lot different from... Uh, 2007 demand. That's because the average of 2008 and 2009 somehow brings us somewhere in the middle to 2007 uh, data. All right. So that's our forecast. We can choose to accept it or not, or try to find another way uh, to forecast. What if instead I did a, a projection of that 134? I believe that this trend is going to increase, but maybe. I'm just going to randomly select 5%. So this average is, actually I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to say that this is equal to the average for 2009 multiplied by 1.05. So here I'm going to increase it to 141 as the average. And we see the adjustments made, and now our forecast is 100 units for um, 2010 in the winter, 147, 219, and 99. Might feel it's a bit aggressive, 
Um, so perhaps what you can do is average that two period moving average forecast with this one and, um, and get a hybrid. You know, there's no hard and fast rule. You just have to use a system that seems to work for the organization that you're working with. So that was basically how we would handle seasonality. First, we take all the data, calculate the global average, then we calculate the seasonal averages, and the ratio of the seasonal averages to the global average gives us the seasonal factors. Then all we now need to do is to project the average for the next year and multiply them by the seasonal factors to get the forecast. Right? And then we repeat that process for we could, if we want to, we could actually update the seasonal factors with the new data that we have and keep doing that constantly rather than just uh, keeping fixed to those seasonal factors which are based on those three sets, uh, three years of data. But now, once we've realized 2010, we could go back and calculate the seasonal factors. If we want to, you could decide, well, I'm going to only use three periods in my um, calculation of the seasonal factors, or I will use all the data that I have um, stretching as far back as possible, in which case now we would include 2010 data and calculate the seasonal average based on four years and not three years. So the process can be adaptive if we actually want to make it so. Okay? Forecasting can be fun. It gives you a chance to experiment with many different things.